glory who by us alaba yes lord by us alabe pega y than the one in the world. Father, as we take this service, be with us, and Father, answer every need and every desire of your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, you may be seated. Um, we, for us to overcome the enemy, we must know the enemy that we are fighting with. The prophet was talking about the tactics when he was a boxer, that um, he would know the enemy that he is fighting with. Either he, he uses uh, uppercuts or left jabs. Uh, you will see the footworks of the enemy so that he can be prepared to fight that enemy. So here we see that we are not, uh, the Satan should take advantage of us. We are not ignorant of his devices. We must know the enemy, his strengths, his weaknesses. Even Christ says, when you are going to fight a battle, you must know that with your 10,000 uh, soldiers, are you able to meet the other one that is coming with the 20,000? So you must study the enemy as, because the enemy is studying you. The devil takes time and he assigns devils to study you, your weaknesses, and he capitalizes on your weaknesses. Is my sound okay? Are you hearing me well? Yes, good. Uh, so the prophet says to overcome means to recognize the devil at every one of his tricks. You must know how he comes and overcome him at every one of his tricks. So there are meetings that are set in hell in the underworld to see how to oppose, how to fight you in your life. But in, in the days of Elisha, also God would see what they are planning in secret who tells the king of Israel what they are planning in Syria in secret so God exposes the plan of the enemy there was a time when Herod was planning that after Easter he will kill Peter but God came down and delivered him so the devil works with seeds that he plants in your life to destroy you and to disarm you as a believer to make you not trust the weapons that we have so in the efficient age they had the opportunity of God's best, but they prevailed for a while and relaxed. In the unguarded moment, Satan planted a seed of complete ruination. So in the unguarded moments of our lives, when you sleep, when you relax, that's when the devil plants his seeds and tricks. So his plan is to make the church formal, formal and powerless, but the book of Revelation exposes Satan, uh, his attempted destruction of God's people. But the true revelation and that the true church, what she is, that she can do greater works. When we have that revelation, we are an invincible army. The devil be thwarted. So the devil is planning to make the church powerless, to make you as an individual prayerless and powerless. 
so it, like Delilah was starting Samson to say where is your strength Samson the devil starts you to see why you are overcoming why you are living according to the word then he starts disarming you making you not read the word making you not get time to pray he starts bringing voices that are contrary to the voice of God to the word of God so that you are deviated from the plan of God but no power of hell or schemes of men could ever pluck me from the hand of God so whatever tricks or tactics or strategies of the enemy whatever tools and instruments that he uses he won't be able to prosper because no weapon formed against you can prosper so we want to see the devices the tools the instruments the strategies of the devil and these tactics the magnets that the devil uses against the believer the devil makes sin so attractive he likes to sugarcoat the, the word of God also to make it hybridized and useless uh, so that you can have vain worship he doesn't fight you coming to church but he wants you to have vain worship by mixing with the traditions of men he wants to bring amnesia to you so that you don't know who you are then you stand defeated the devil has his webs like a spider does to trap you into a fruitless uh, a, a life that is barren where you are always busy in things that in the programs uh, in the value system of the devil you know why people are trapped in things that destroy them or that drain them spiritually it's because of the wrong value system but if you value the word of god all your activity and motivation will be around the word of god this whole world has been um, uh, has a virus of the devil's operating system the what they value even in institutions the whole operation system all kingdoms have become the kingdoms of the devil but there will come a time under the voice of the seventh angel when he sounded his trumpet the bible says the kingdoms of god of this world have become the kingdoms of god so the civilization of the devil is actually antichrist but there's a word civilization that will take over and there will be a total transformation of this world so the devil overcomes you when you operate in his territory so no matter what happens don't see how close you can get to sin but how far you can stay away from sin avoid all the power tricks of the devil the devil works with unbelief that is his number one trick you want to to, uh, to disbelieve the word of god he wants to reason with the word of god but as a believer you take god at his word you don't reason you don't add you don't separate but you believe the word he works with the symptoms those that observe lying vanities they forsake their mercy you don't look at your circumstances and your symptoms but you look at the promise of the hour what god said you the devil wants you to be double-minded so that you can live in underprivileged life because a double-minded pe person is unstable in all his ways he works with procrastinating you know if you want to do something do it today don't put to tomorrow all good things that must be done today so the devil works with unconfessed sin when that sin is at the end of your soul you cannot reach heights that you can live because you have a sin that easily besets you everyone has a certain weakness that they must overcome which is that sin that easily besets you so the devil works with in substitution you will present something to you that is that will take the place of the original when he came uh, up to Naboth he says give me your vineyard so that i can make it a garden of herbs or i will give you something better but if you had something better than napoleon's vineyard you are not going to stress over napoleon's vineyard so the devil works with this unit when you are united as a church when there is love in the church there is no way he can fight, he can fight at he cannot overcome us but he works with impersonation of christianity when people are not born again but they try to act like Christians. That is the devil's trick to give you false comfort in being a message believer when you are not born again. You will have false comfort that we are the bride. The bride is those who are by one spirit baptized into the body of Christ. His instruments and the tricks is when he uses pride. And when he makes you fail to confess your sins. When he diverts your attention from the word of God. So the devil will hide the bait you hide the, the hook by putting the bait you make things so attractive sin is glamorized sin is not so attractive even the fruit there was good for food desirable to the eyes and desirable to make one wise 
So those are the three things of money, women, popularity. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Those are the things that the devil uses to attract you. Then there is a way that seems right to all men, but the ends thereof are ways of death. So the devil traps you through the things of this world, the monies, and the, there is a snare of the devil. So you must always be ready to escape the snare of the enemy. So don't even enter the snare. Now, the devil works with the religious spirits. He allows you to come to church, but he won't allow you to get to the stature of a perfect man. Because you become a part-time Christian, and a part-time Christian cannot overcome a full-time devil. So when, even when spirits are cast out, the, the Christ tells us in Luke chapter 11, verse 24, that the, those unclean spirits, they go out of heaven, they go to dry places, and they want to come back. So they wait for your weakest, for your unguarded moment, when you are not praying, when you are not attending services then they come back to you so i would look, like, like to look at the deeds that the devil uses. he uses doubt he uses deception he uses disappointments he uses discontentment if someone is in church and they are not content with the word of god they will try to pull other things other fashions other things behaviorism and mannerism from outside but be content with what we have he uses disbelief he uses discouragement. He uses disobedience. These are the instruments in the tools box of the devil. He uses despair. He uses distraction. And he uses disillusionment. When you look at things and you, you are seeing a, a mirage as a real thing, the devil uses diversion to divert you. He uses delays and he uses defeat. So that when he uses doubts, he wants you to question God. But as a believer, you rest on the promise of God. So the devil, um, his plan is to make you busy. Someone was saying busy is being under Satan's yoke. <laughs> when you are busy with the wrong things, but otherwise you must always be busy with the things of God. So there are people who are busy, but they don't do anything. You are busy on Facebook, you are busy on WhatsApp, but you did not listen to the tape today. You did not read the Bible, but if you are busy, it means because you are busy, you will pray more so that you are right in your being busy. Because you are busy, you have time to listen to the word of God. Now, the devil has snares. We must be able to realize the snares and to identify him at every one of, the, of his tricks because the devil cannot set a foot to harm you unless you come out of the territory that God has put you in the promised land, the message of the hour. So he will make you watch movies and watch things and he, because you are now lovers of pleasure more than of the word of God. You know, entertainment becomes a trap. The things of God is high in the presence of God is pleasures forevermore. So the highest pleasure is being in the presence of God. So when the devil realized when he, when he was through tempting Christ, the Bible says he departed for a season. When he realized that he could not destroy Christ, he started working with those around him. So when the devil cannot destroy you, you will look for people around you. You will come through your children, through everything around, through your boss, through things, but you must identify him at every one of his tricks and oppose him. So the devil uses scarecrows to make you, you will point you to failures. You will point you to people who have failed to make it so that you feel like it doesn't work. Now, you must refuse to dance to the devil's tune. You must always be in the things of God. Satan attacks with wounds from the past. When he shows you your past, show him his future in the local fire. So the devil has instruments and tools and strategies and tactics that he uses. He uses, he makes, makes you get used to the ministry. So at the time when God wants to speak to you, you now are used and you don't get anything. But if you are not used to the services, you get something even in the song service. You get something even in the quiet time. So the devil makes you lose confidence with the ministry so that he can shoot all his poisonous arrows. He wants to disarm you. He wants you to be double-minded. He wants you to live an underprivileged life. And he wants you to have intellectual religion. Intellectual faith cannot move any devil. But when you believe from your heart, you see that God starts working in your life. You must be able to recognize the devil's attacks. 
And the best defense against the devil is to be so God-centered that you give no place for the devil. The Bible says, give no occasion for the flesh to fulfill its lust. But the devil, um, don't let the devil bring you down. As an if when unexpected storms come, they cannot bring you down. You always be high. You ride on the storms. So your Christianity is not dependent on happenings around you, but happenings in your heart. But the devil wants to keep you feeling defeated because you are looking at the sins that are under the blood. It's always reminding you of who you, your failures and your mistakes. So, the, 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 but if the devil, why is fighting you? The devil wouldn't be attacking you if there was something worth attacking in you. Because he knows that there is something of value in you. The robbers cannot enter a house when there is nothing there. So the Bible says while men slept. The moment where you are sleeping. The moment where you are not diligent. Where you are not vigilant. Where, where you are not sober in your Christianity. Where you think that like, well I am born again and you relax. When men slept in that unguarded moment, that sweat poisons are short. But if you are awake and you are reading the word of God, you shall not be afraid of the arrow that flies by night. So in our homes, there must be an atmosphere that repels the devil. In our, in our, even our pinups, our pictures in the homes, our what we see in our phones, we should not bring any cursed object like Akan because. The, those cursed objects in our lives is what makes us powerless as believers. It makes us um, fail to overcome. The devil is a daring devil. He could even appear before Saint Martin as an angel of light because he knows when you love things that are supernatural, you love gifts in life, you love sensations, you love wonderful experiences. Be careful the devil can bring an experience that is of the word of God. You, you must love those things. Even Paul says these are spiritual gifts. It's all right. But you have a filter. Because he, the devil can enslave you through wrong dreams. Because you believe your dreams, which is okay. But then the devil can make you slaves. He brings a dream that will bring fear. God does not operate by fear. Actually, one of the first people mentioned to go to hell in the book of Revelation says the fearful, the warmongers. God doesn't like fearful people. He doesn't work with cowards. Every time an angel of the Lord comes, he says, fear not. But the devil works with fear. You are fearing, mm, maybe I don't have the Holy Spirit. Maybe the Holy Ghost has left me. Uh, uh, maybe I won't make it to heaven. You must not fear if you are a child of God. So the devil, he resists. He says here in, when, in Thessalonica that uh, Satan hindered us. Paul wanted to go there. So the devil's activity, he, he blinds the people. The God of this evil age blinds. And he robs you, he's the robber, he comes to, to steal, to kill and to destroy. And he fights, he lies. He, when he tells a lie, he tells his own because he's the father of lies. He beguiles like he beguiled Eve. And he deceives and he accuses. So don't accuse brothers. You are doing someone's job there. And he hinders and he, he, he desire to sift Peter like wheat. So a Christian is not tossed to and for you are not sifted. And you are stable even in your mind. When you catch a vision of the unseen God, there is something that stabilizes your thinking. You are stable in everything. Stable in business. Stable in prayer. Stable even in choices. You don't understand the brother who is unstable. He said, today I'm with this sister. Tomorrow I'm this. The sister is also unstable in knowing who is supposed to be the brother. The devil works with the negative emotions. You can be in church full of love like this. Then you are saying there is no love in church. So where is it? Where is love? In the beer hole, then you go to a beer hole. There's no love in church. Everyone doesn't love me. Everyone. It's the devil whispering to you. But when the devil comes with these passes of problems and negativity, haters, you just throw away those things. Refuse the devil's passer. Never permit any negative thought to come to your mind when it starts, don't entertain it. So the devil studies you. And the gates of entry through the five senses, by your eye, by your hearing. But you must every time make sure those gates, there's a, a guarding. They, they, you guard them by the word of God. The devil knows your name, but he calls you by your sin. But God knows your sin and he calls you by your name. So the devil uh, wants you to pay attention to your feelings. 
But Jesus wants you to pay attention to the truth. So the devil wants you to bow to the things of this world, to pressure, to discouragement, to compromise. Nebuchadnezzar made an image and he wanted everyone to bow. But there were boys that refused to bow and they refused to bend because they knew who they had believed. The devil doesn't always come in form of evil. He is the master of disguise. He attends church services. And he, when sons of God were presenting themselves, he was there. But he has a strategy to, to, to just bring misery in your life. In the days of Gideon, when they were harvesting, in the time when their salary was coming to the account, in the time when they were harvesting, there will be something that will come to rob them of what was coming. So the, the Bible says the Philistines, the Midianites, they impoverished Israel. So the devil wants to impoverish you, spiritually poverty and natural poverty. So in the days when a, 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 a Titus was coming into Israel, the, he had to plan how to demoralize the fighters in Israel by first attacking the temple. So the devil, he knew that their source of motivation is the temple. Their source of motivation is the service. So when the devil knows that you are empowered in church services, the first thing he makes you start becoming so busy during church services. At one time you had no job and we were praying for you. Now your job is making you work on Sunday. And now your job is making you work during services. And when you are working in your job, you can't even live stream. So that's the devil planning how to take away any source of encouragement and then surround you with the negatives that will bombard you until you collapse down. So when he surrounded Jerusalem, he, he started starving them because they could not go out to get food. So the devil has a strategy to starve you spiritually. So that when you are not eating, you are not reading. Uh, even as preachers, we must not read to preach. But you must feed your soul. You have enough power of God by digesting, eating the word. You cannot just read because you have to preach. But you must listen to a message. These days we have a problem of people just going to the hit list, getting this quote and that quote out of context. But when you listen to the whole message, you can be empowered. You know, as a believer, you cannot spend the whole day without listening to the voice, to the message of the hour, so that you are empowered. That is the spiritual food that we have. So when the devil saw that they were fortified, and they had walls that were high that they could not penetrate in Jerusalem. But he started shooting mighty arrows and throwing through engines, stones that would destroy the walls. As a Christian church, as a believer, you are fortified behind the word of God. Stay under the blood. Stay in, the, in your position, your, your, your position in Christ. If you move away from there, it's destruction. But when the enemy's hand moves to try and harm you, there is an unseen hand that restores. Whatever the devil tries in your life, God is there to restore. He restored my soul. The devil likes to isolate us and make us think we are the only one going through that problem. When a lion wants to attack buffaloes or whatever, zebras, it will first isolate one of them. When you see the devil remove you from brothers and sisters, from fellowship, is about to destroy you. The devil works with deceptive mirages. There are things that you see that ah, it's better that side. It's better outside. When you get there, you find there's nothing. He works with the lying spirits in religious circles. They, they are servants of the devil who must go around as servants of God. So Micah says, I saw the throne of God and the lying spirit entered those prophets. Those prophets were were Israelites, I think they were circumcised they, they, but under a Jezebel system they were mixing Jezebel things and the Israel things, you see as a believer in this message, be content with the message that we have, don't mix things that, don't mix things that are outside don't hybridize, the message is pure in its form, now the devil doesn't want you to know your position and your authority uh, 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 to know his weaknesses because the devil is so cheap when the weakest of believers begins to pray, there is confusion. You find way of access through worldly music, through laziness to pray, through sexual immorality, through uh, occult initiations and demonic things, unconfessed sin. 
and disobedience and ignorance he will make you have a weakness where you can enter because a chain is as strong as its weakest link so the devil um, will start your nature so that you can see how to discredit you so they are anti-revival devils which if we want a revival we must bind those spirits we must see what is causing the fire of God to dim down and what is quenching the spirit in our lives so the things that we watch even whether it's televisions whether it's a whether it's in your phone whether it's internet there are things that train you you must filter your influences as a believer now the bible is it says you can now bind the sweet influence of plautis uh, so there there's an influence that cannot be bound the influence of the seven stars the message so a church as the church of god we are under the sweet influence of the holy ghost of the bible of the message of the fivefold of the testimonies of the heavenly atmosphere of the tapes of christian music of the of the sermons but we have to bind influence of of the other stars pop stars gang stars movie stars celebrities wealthy fashions wealthy hairstyles the devil has favorite tactics to bring the world into the church you know when israel left egypt they went to their place in Jerusalem there. And later you find Jerusalem is now called Sodom and Egypt in Revelation chapter 11. Because the devil has brought what they left into their place. The church came out of Babylon. But later you find that in Revelation 17 they are now called Mystery Babylon. Because the devil has brought back what they came out of. When the church went into Babylon, it had no Pharisees and Sadducees. When they came out, that's why there was confusion of religion so we must break the influence of your past of demonic spirits uh, enticing spirits and the influence of of wealthy music when i say influence of wealthy music i mean even wealthy music in church because the prophet says i don't care how good a woman child is raised in and uh, how they've been taught to do right if that child hasn't accepted the experience of the new birth rock and roll catches his attention as quick as he hears it so the devil uh, uh, you are no match when you don't have the holy spirit you are going to be defeated do you know that even christ's temptations they came after he received the holy spirit as soon as he had the holy spirit he overcame by it is written it is written so you without the holy spirit you have no chance the devil has six thousand years of experience so for you to overcome you don't put the cart before the horses don't try to behave like a believer wave your hand like a believer and say hallelujah like a believer but have an experience in your soul so that you can say greater is he that is within me than the one that is in the world because the devil uh, works you know when i say it god uh, the devil isolates you uh, there's a difference between isolation that the devil does and separation that god does because God separates, He doesn't isolate. But the, the, the devil isolates you from believers, but God separates you from unbelievers, from influences that destroy you. But He doesn't isolate you from believers. So in the book of Jude, there are certain people that crept in unawares, agents of the devil. The devil in every church has his agents. As much as God has his ambassadors, the devil also is his agents we, the devil has assignments to fight the believers to make them uh, powerless but we also have an assignment for this purpose the son of man came to destroy the works of the devil our assignment is to prove that we are one in a million to prove that man can live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of god so the devil he masquerades he is a master in disguise so he also does miracles and signs and wonders you know when the devil wants to silence you and he will show you miracles with the no word where the voice of those miracles is divergent from the voice of the message so the devil will bring fake things in your life so that you he can substitute you must never accept a fake experience when the pentecostal skies are full of the original so in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, it says, No marvel, the devil himself is transformed into an angel of light. 
so the devil knows you know even in the, in the days of the church ages he would even produce elijah's garments yeah, yeah. if you talk on supernatural brother it must be filtered don't be hungry for an experience with angels and the experience with sensations and things until you go on a tangent because when the devil cannot keep you from a truth he will push you over in a tangent or in the extreme so the devil invades church invades pulpits so when the pulpit starts now preaching hatred preaching uh, things that are or even not hatred or trying to make people feel better when they are supposed to repent so the the devil comes as his wolves in sheep's clothing the strategies of the devil is to discredit god's word to discredit the word of god and the message his strategy is to disarm you by making you question your armor question what is supposed to protect you he is there to misinterpret to dislocate and to misquote the word of god that is what the devil actually quotes when he came to Eve, he was quoting. You are saying, did not God say? The, but the devil always comes with a question. That's why when something is questionable, be, be, be careful. The devil is there to add and subtract on the word of God. He is there to cause a pure where you as a believer gets married to the world. There's never been an edge where there's an argument in terms of marriage. Who is a believer, brother? Who is a believer? Um, in, how can we say they are unbelievers when they have not we have not shown them the message you, you you may be right but after showing them the message why do we have to be to stick on them for marriage right so the devil's strategy is to strike the shepherd the devil when he when he goes to the pastors and they become prayerless he knows they will shoot poison in the church when you strike the shepherd the sheep will scatter so he, he makes him so attractive and he wants to study you and take advantage of your weakness and he, you will make something look real when it's so false the prophet says it will take a scripturally trained church because there will be many things great marvelous things in the supernatural world that will look like real but if you give it a word test so the devil is instruments and the switches that he works in in your flesh that is lust of the flesh uh, lust of the eyes and pride of life emotions and jealous those are the instruments that he uses and the devil wants to point you to your past he points you to failures the devil will never point you to someone with the holy ghost he will point you to another sister who compromised and they are still in church say so there's nothing there are no consequences he will point you to your mistakes to your weaknesses to your limitations to your fears he will point you to the negatives but as a believer you must always make sure there is nothing between your soul and your savior make sure you are always clear before god be so honest that if you are not right you make right be so honest with yourself that you don't pretend that things are okay but you stay in prayer the devil has strategies to destroy your families because if our families we have no time with our children at an early age to show them the message now do you know that our uh, uh, the eagles children uh, the, the 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 eaglets they eat meat from from birth so your children if as young as they are there is no deep subject of the message that they must not know you must not choose a children's step to play in the homes but you play the message as it is what is blessing you they must hear it if you are going to listen to a two-hour message even that little child who has two hours on youtube on paper pick must be able to have two hours in the message they were two hours on chuchu tv now they can be two hours in the message of the hour we must know that the devil has tricks against your marriage to chain you so that you are always arguing chaining your home and chaining you financially he has tricks to to fight your business he has tricks to make you powerless because if your bible is closed how can heavens be open for you as a believer you're not reading you're not eating that's why you are malnourished your mind is chained if thoughts are coming in because you don't have the antivirus of the word of god you are always chained in every direction of life the devil gives you false comfort 
you say I'm rich and increased in goods and have need of nothing, but you don't know that you are rich, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. You must check your spiritual state. How are you in the mirror of God's word? I know we have two hours to look in the mirror, to comb our hair this way, to check ourselves in the natural mirror. But where are we in the mirror of God's word? Because you can have a name that you live, but you are dead, like the church in Satis. That's why you find people enjoy song service. But when it comes to preaching, they are already sleeping. When it comes to preaching, they have no interest. People enjoy uh, some of the people who watch the maybe the convention in Harare, they are going to watch the song service. When it when the tape starts, they are done, throw, finished. They will watch all the groups that were singing in the convention. Oh brother, it was nice. Oh, that one, the whole all the dances there, they will enjoy it. But as soon as they say now the tape is starting, you stop there and look for the next song service. Because you are in you are getting entertained right. instead of being equipped. Now, in these last days, the prophet says you realize that men, boys, we have ten times more temptations. Uh, uh, your daughter has ten times more temptations than we had when you were a, when you were a girl. And we need to pray. Uh, go break that uh, you realize that we don't pray half as much as our fathers did, Pastor. Do you realize we don't put much time on our knees? Why? Because in our operation system, from when you wake up, you are looking for the phone before you open your eyes. Where is the phone? The devil has made you so busy uh, in your system daily. The word Facebook will appear in your mind automatically. The word WhatsApp will appear in your mind every day automatically. But the word serious church edges may not appear because that is our system. We say, brother, our generation is like that. But we, then they arose another generation that doesn't know the powers of God. That's, if, if you are in that realm where you, are, you don't tap into the supernatural, you cannot stand against a real devil. Because the Bible says, iniquity shall abound and the love of many shall wax cold. There are things that are making you powerless. There are things that are draining you, your spiritual battle. And there will come a time when people won't enjoy sound doctrine. But after their own last, they shall heap up teachers with itching ears. So the devil is planning in the underworld to say, Christians will always be Christians. So we cannot make them Buddhist and what, but let's invert them and make them powerless. So the greatest battle ever fought is in the mind. If your mind's value system is not in sensual pleasures, if the value and gratification system is just in saying, ah, I've experienced something heavenly today, then you are invincible. The Satan's target is your mind. His weapons is, is lies. And the Satan's purpose is to make you ignorant of the will of God. So the God of the evil age is blind in the eyes of the people. So you may be blind to your testimony. You may be blind to the perfect will of God. You may be blind to the angel of the Lord that is there just next to you. Because your, your senses, your conscience has been seared. You don't see. So the devil whispers many things in your ears. He wants to question God's, God's truth. He wants to question the message. You know why Christ chased and said, Peter, say to Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. He said to something in Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Because Peter was trying to correct the word. He says, you are not going to suffer, you are not going to die. Christ, the word is saying, now the time has come for me to suffer. But now, that is a, a hard quotation. That is an unpleasant quotation. But Peter was trying to make that quotation nice. So, there are hard quotations. Take them as they are. There are hard statements. Give them to the congregation as they are. But where he says, get thee behind me, Satan, is when Peter was saying, no, you don't die. Sim trying to correct the word. Don't correct the prophet. Don't correct the message of the word. Take it as it is. We are living in the days where evil um, and even evil usually comes from the pulpit. 
if the pulpit would have stayed in, we wouldn't have all this stuff. If the prophet shows that why our children can, cannot know God at a tender age. Knowing God is not only memory verses that we do in Sunday school, but it's a life. Your children can fire intellectual memory verses and quotes from the prophet from, from start to the last, and they don't like it. But if God becomes more real to our children, more than YouTube and more, more than uh, kids, kids programs that are there, then we are reaching somewhere. We must make God real to our families. It, it starts as puppy delinquents, then it becomes parental delinquents, then it gets to juvenile delinquents. So you see, sin will take you further than you want to go. It will keep you longer than you want to stay. And it will cost you more than you, you can pay. When you want to do something evil, you first have to throw down the word of God. That's why if you are a filthy person, you cannot be filthy while your tape is playing in your phone. You will have to first stop it and start the wrong things. That's why you, you must put on the whole armor of God. When you notice that the devil attacks you in your dreams, you rather let, let the, play, the tape play through your dreams to create an atmosphere because that unguarded moment is the danger time and now the other trick of the devil he wants to present a god that that, that he loves more than god uh, that loves the wrong way of loving where god loves you so much that he, he won't correct you but christ says those that i love i rebuke and chasten be zealous therefore and repent that's why even the pictures of Jesus online are not Jesus. That's right, I like that. Actually, you see this Jesus doing like performed, doing these signs. You see the picture that is there of Jesus there. That is how the devil is portraying. You know, these days people won't make idols to worship them. But they make an idol version of God that they've framed not by the word of God. God is too good, you won't judge me. He is a God of justice also. If you are sinning, Cain was told that if you repent, you shall be accepted. But if you don't repent, sin lies at the door. Now, you may not be able to avoid the bed flying over your head. But you can stop it from making a nest and laying eggs. If thoughts may fly over, your weaknesses may come. You, you cannot avoid facing a temptation. I, I, unless if it is temptation that in an area where you are not supposed to be in where you are in the devil's ground but when temptations those trials come from every end you, you, you still can overcome because God makes a way of escape you must chase away those things like Abraham was chasing away the fowls of the air now in the days uh, in the day of Christ why he had all ch the devil had all children killed from two years back trying to stop it and that's the trick of the devil today to break the faith of the young generation in the days of Moses he was fighting the young ones in the days of Christ he was killing the two year ones it means the young people are an instrument either of God or of the devil Atalia tried to utterly destroy the royal the royal bloodline you are a royal person, you are a royal priest of a peculiar nation. The devil wants to destroy the royal part of you and leave the natural part of you. Because the royal part of you is the one that prays, is the one that studies. If you are so less, this generation that we are in now doesn't read. Everything must be animated, everything must have a meme everything must have a picture at least i put some pictures here yeah, it works very well because people don't want to read even if we have the the voice and the table get time to read the spoken word proper like reading where you can underline i know you can highlight on your phone and but the day you will lose your phone or upgrade your phone all your highlights you have to re-highlight in another phone so as we embrace technology for its good let's keep some of the old-fashioned things now 
when David was a warrior going for missionary work fighting the battles of the Lord he was he had no problem but the day he was on the housetop he was on the valley spiritual <laughs> the day he was up there natural he was down here spiritual that's when he started seeing this bad, bad thing bad shepherd <laughs> but if he was in the battles of the Lord that's why sisters if your husband is a missionary encourage him join him the moment you are saying you are going too much come back home he will come home with things because he, he is no longer effective he's no longer in his adoption because when you are at your post of duty the devil has no chance some people have a high sin rate because they, do, they have a high a, a low service rate sometimes in my life I notice that I'm protected a lot because I'm always busy with the work, work of God so the sin rate goes so low now um, be free from satanic control and powers and cases you, you, you must know the demonic assignments in your life the devil tries to, to frighten you but God reassures you he, he tries to confuse you but God enlarges you there, there is a proverb that says a little thief opens the door for a big thief many times there is a little compromise that you do that little compromise will make it easy to do the next big thing a little thief comes in maybe your child is coming to steal sugar somewhere they leave the door open then a, a little thief comes in so sin when it happens like David is looking at Bathsheba there when he sins with Bathsheba you will need a bigger sin to cover that sin you will need to kill somebody to cover that sin so when you allow sin it will take you further than you want to go so we find Zechariah there, the Joshua the high priest before the angel of the Lord and the devil was there to resist him the devil is always there to resist when he resists you resist him break the resistance when you are trying to pray there will be resistance one time the prophet is trying to pray mosquitoes are biting that's a trick of the devil the rocks are cutting but don't stop because of that resistance when you break that sound barrier when you break that barrier of the enemy it is unlimited what you can get in that prayer so when there is sin in your life the devil takes advantage but today we're going to sue the devil you must claim back every inch of ground that the devil stole from you now in the message court trial it shows the tools of the devil the actions that he uses to try to discredit God's word the prosecuting attorney in that court case was the devil the prosecuting God's word saying God doesn't keep his promise anything that questions God's word is your enemy so the prosecutor is some witness that is Mr. Unbeliever and Mr. Skeptic and Mr. Impatient maybe you are here also as Mr. Impatient or Mr. Skeptic and Mr. Unbeliever because there are three kinds of believers here now those are the instruments and the tools and the you know you can be an instrument of God instrument of righteousness or an instrument of the devil so Mr. Skeptic Mr. Impatient but the defendant of the word of God is the Holy Ghost God protects his word when you believe he will take care but the jury in that court case was the church to see um, the jury is for you to judge in your mind because the battle is in your mind so Mr. Unbeliever will say I stomach trouble for some years and I went to Holy Ghost meeting I was prayed for by Mark, in Mark 16 way but I'm still a sick but these things are for believers then Mr. Um, skeptic will say I TP for 15 years I was prayed for nothing happened Mr. Impatient also says it's been 5 years ago um, I was prayed for in my crippled legs and still the same but the believer stays with God's word if, if it doesn't happen today it will happen tomorrow so the persecutor is the devil himself um, but God is the judge is our advocate also so the Bible says be sober and vigilant because your adversary the devil looks uh, moves around like a roaring lion seeking those that he may devour 
so there are some that can be devoured but there are some who always overcome so as a child of God you overcome by the word of God it will be certain any time any place under any circumstances so whenever God is going to elevate you there is a demon that comes to distract you and um, don't let distraction take you off course so the devil works with veils of ignorance you veils of reasoning limitations and obstacles negativism and evil habits unforgiveness that he throws before you his instruments are fear but as a child of god you must break fear don't live a life of fear i'm fearing that maybe god won't hear my prayer god won't do. don't fear anything stay be confident in god so in in the book of genesis the devil's snare was on those three things uh, last of the flesh, uh, eyes, last of the flesh, and pride of life. The devil has been a murderer from the beginning. So he, he doesn't speak truth; is a liar. And his great trick was to make people think he doesn't exist. But for you to overcome, you must know your enemy. Discern Satan's tactics. How to discern and overcome them? The devil's snare does not catch you unless first you are caught by his bait so the devil these days through technology he makes people so busy in their gadgets and through uh, television programs that are dirty there's nudity violence blasphemy your children are absorbing that even when you give your children good things maybe let's say um there's what choo choo tv coco melon and things um you must see what is popping up next that's how our children are exposed to homosexual cartoons because the devil has put homosexual cartoons even our toys that we buy for those cars for the children they have wealthy music it doesn't become okay because it's in a toy you, the, that music is wealthy music so we, we must be careful of how the devil ties himself around our minds stay away from anything that is contrary to the word of God but when, he, when, he, when the devil wants to fight ministry, he brings someone in the church that will be a spiritual cancer. That will start speaking bad about everybody and then causing uh, divisions and, uh, because the devil has a divide and rule strategy. But when we are united, when the weakest of Christians begins to pray, the devil trembles. So the devil has strategies of fighting your marriage. In your marriage, the prophet says, never let that honeymoon feeling end. You should be honeymoon throughout because your honey is still there and you don't remain with just moon no chat <laughs> you just you must keep the love fire burning even when you are angry the bible says you don't let the sun set in your anger so if you are angry the next day you are now unscriptural <laughs> the, devil gave you a, the bible gave you a little bit of then to, to, you can be angry right it's normal but don't let the sun set in your anger <laughs> so the devil has a plan to destroy your marriage he, he has a plan to you must tell the devil that you can't have my marriage you defend it in prayer because the spiritual fiber of your marriage is when you can kneel down together and pray so the devil uses arrogance and he uses personality cults you know when we are true believers of the message we are not here because of certain personality we are not here because of pastor so and so we are here because all of us are standing for the message the day i will step away from the message you people i don't expect to see you and you, maybe you may not expect to see me you will throw me away because you can't have all people going for one person that one person must go <laughs> so the prophet says um there are three things that the devil uses money women and popularity money is good women are good the spreading of the gospel is good but when you when it comes when your heart is now in man until you go for money at the expense of your soul then you have a problem there whatever you gain in life don't gain it at the expense of your soul that's why the bible says you must prosper as your soul prospered so the first thing your soul must prosper this other prosperity that separates from the prosperity of the soul is a problem 
Now the devil can whisper to you that you have crossed the line. The line of it, you heard it from the message. Now the devil is now telling you using message language. As long as this breath in you, worship God. Even if they tell you you have crossed the line, you have blasphemed. Job says, though he slays me. The prophet says, if I will go to hell, you hear hallelujahs in hell because I'm not worshipping because I'm fearing going to hell. I love the Lord. One of the tricks of the devil is I'm fixing to close now. He wants you to measure on a mind. Now brothers, all things that we have, the supernatural, the, 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 the gifts of the spirit and our, the authority we have to cast out devils is not the measure of the message. Those things follow you. You don't follow those things. I can't skip over my shadow. It will always follow me. But the real thing, the message is a revelation that is given to us to defeat the devil. The message is a teaching message. You must listen to it and be taught, be anchored. It is able to establish you, to build you. All these other blessings of cars and things, brother, that is not, we enjoy those things. Those are benefits. But the real job is the message of the hour. But now when the devil, um, the, the full gospel church is divided in, in two ways right now. One getting cold and formal in different danger life. The other one is getting a bunch of kinds of mystics, high things that are not even scriptural. You know when we get excited about things that are happening among us, let's say now our bedroom is firing with people speaking in tongues and interpreting that's so fine we like it actually we have many people who speak in tongues among us and where people interpret it so right but the problem is when you now expect god to speak every day when he speaks maybe once in three months so when he doesn't speak you now have to manufacture something you have gifted people who end up lying to people the people know that this brother can see things he can dream things God cannot can stay three months without giving you a dream now you come and say I had a dream I had a, try, trying to keep it running leave it when God is in is not there he's going to move in his time don't try to grow things the devil works with church politics and he works with he's inverting the churches but we want to expose all the landmines I want to finish soon in the sixth day war there was a wind that exposed all the landmines and israel walked in safety so these days they are daring devils that your intellectual strength cannot meet the challenge of the hour the devils that are loose that there are no powers that can challenge it except the spirit of the mighty god it's not by might it's not by power but by the spirit of god so in this time that we are living in like in the days of our uh, of, of, of pecamos they dwelt where Satan's seat was the devil had a seat in the church. He was worshipped as a living serpent, Iscalipus. So, the devil, in the book of Revelation chapter 12, he was waiting that when the man child is born, he would devour the child. But the child was caught up to heaven. The devil waits that when your testimony is born, he wants to destroy it. When you, when you are born again, he says, uh, the Bible says, Simon, Simon, the devil desired you to save you like wheat, but I prayed for you. The devil celebrates when you are at your lowest. The tricks of Delilah was to shave, to remove the power of Samson. That is the trick of denominationalism. The trick of all. The devil doesn't want to see you powerless with the only true, pure message. You make you. You know there are some people who like our sermon so much until they don't even listen to the prophet's sermon. It's okay to like us, I'm not saying you don't like them. I actually enjoy when you like them. I'm honest. <laughs> but I'm also worried when you don't listen to the message of the prophet. It means if you like my sermons only, it means that maybe I, I'm not preaching what the prophet preached. Because if you like what I'm preaching, you also like what I took it from. So the devil tries to block your prayers like the prince of Persia was trying to block the prayers of Daniel, but Daniel was fasting and praying. There is a type that goes with fasting, but some of you, fasting is painful. You don't even have nice food, but you can't fast. The devil has transformed himself to be an angel of light. 
the prophet was saying uh, mentioning from that dream in the message greatest bed to ever fought that when the devil says boo don't be afraid you, you just say boo back and you fight so when we read this court we say when the devil say boo we say boo but when it happens in our life you run away <laughs> because the boo of it is a happening in your life it's not a sound <laughs> When the devil says, Boo, and you see things, you just fight back. But when it happens natural in, in the actual happening, we run away. We must be able to bind the strong men of the house and bind anything that comes against your, the message of the house. In the days of Israel, they were warned against two things the, uh, against among many things, they were the Midianites and Jebusites these days they are media things and websites <laughs> those are the Midianites and the, and the Jebusites of today I want to tell you that you can live without those things actually those things must make you vomit because it's not in your system but if something in you calls to that deep of, of field it means there is a, a field spirit in you because your appetites and your, your, your cravings your desires save you out but if there is a deep in the devil that calls to a deep in you then there is a problem but your life must be calling to realms of the spirit of God you know if you are a child of God and you live a filthy life or you, you commit one sin the devil enjoys to strike in that moment because he knows that you have no confidence after sin but in those days when you are good and strong and you are hallelujah when the devil strikes oh call you you're going to fight but as soon as you are through you know you are, you, you are not anticipating an attack you are in place then the devil hits at that wrong time you are finished because First, you, you have no confidence. That's why you must live in holiness all the days of your life. Let's turn to our feet so that I can close. I think my time is up. The devil, when he attacks a true Christian, it's an own goal. Because it turns against the devil. Even Paul says, the things that have happened to me have become for the furtherance of the gospel. To a Christian, whatever negative thing, every burden becomes a blessing now a python or a snake can catch a bird by changing colors it's because of entertainment the bird is just being entertained it can fly but saying I will fly later you can leave those things but you are saying I just last I want to see this last one now if your eye causes you to sin remove it I'm not saying natural. I'm not saying natural. I'm saying there are scriptures that cut that eye that likes those things. You can overcome. Don't allow the devil to block your prayers. You can overcome territorial devils. You can overcome wealthy music. When I'm saying wealthy music, I mean even wealthy genres coming coming in our, in our midst. And you, you can live above. When the prophet was saying there's a mamba on the highway. That mamba cannot be in the center of the highway. I want you to notice something. It goes, the devil's trick is to take you to extremes. The mamba cannot be in the center of the highway. It's there to bite those who are going to the extremes. I have a scripture for that. The scripture says no ravenous beast can enter the highway. Because the highway is Christ. Christ is the way. So, but in the highway, there, there is the way and the highway in the way the way is christ but the highway the other side where if you drift this way the mamba bites you if you drift to this extreme of coldness and formality the mamba bites you if you drift to this way of super duper things that are not in the message loving sensations until you are importing from nigerians and from things the, the, the mamba also bites you 
but those who have been beaten there is a hospital here you can come there's a message that you look and leave so if you are idle idleness is the devil's workshop so you must keep him unemployed one of the tactics of the devil is to waste your time redeem time because days are evil have quality time to pray when i say quality time i don't mean when you are now to sleeping and you make a hole in your blanket then you pray and then you go in i'm talking about talking with god where mountains move as you are praying you know i was worried this week um i lost my passport so i have some meetings that i was supposed to attend but i lost my passport i looked for it for days when I was in Arara, I kept phoning my family. I, I recruited all the penises and them and searching the house. Let's find the passport. Short ones will find in the shorter places. Tall ones will find. So we could not find it. So I got so worried. Then um, when I got home, I was so tired. I removed my ring and put it somewhere. And I rested. So I thought I left my ring in Arara. In a, in a room where I was in so I lost I, I told my wife two things that I can't find my wife just says as usual pray we have searched for the passport we could not find it I knelt down to pray when I said amen there was no super to pass something God did not tell me where the passport was but I just stood up like that and went and leaned where the passport was <laughs> And I just opened the paper and I found, oh, my passport is here. Then from there, I went back to just rest where I was praying. I saw my ring is there. You know, God, it works in a simple way without you trying to, without trying to be super duper about things. Yes, sometimes it comes really in a vision, it happens. But sometimes when it comes in a simple way, see that is God. Now, I may not be able to finish this let me say that as a christian to live victorious you must identify the devil in every one of his tricks and overcome him the devil wants you to be powerless and then you depend on someone who is prayerful when you also can be prayerful yes we can reinforce each other but each one of you if you are a part of god you are powerful enough to shake that devil don't allow the devils that are training, even witches that are training to be sent to your home that you, you can be injured, you are still immature. Just go to the weak one. And the devils are doing apprenticeship in your home. The devil must fear you because you are living in the realm of the supernatural. As children of God, we must have everything about us being wet. If we need a revival, it must be a wet born reviver if you need an experience it must be a word born experience if you need prosperity it must be word born prosperity so everything around us must be from the word of God maybe some of you have been tricked by the devil want to break those tricks so the devil has no power in your life his tricks that he was doing to keep you low now you are not ignorant of his devices let's all pray our lead in prayer our heavenly father we've been teaching we've been learning exposing the enemy how he comes trying to make your church powerless how he also uses the scriptural things but in a fanatic way to try and push them overboard heavenly father we pray that you give us the balance to stay true keep us true father keep us busy in the post of duty so that we are not the lazy man who is the devil's workshop Heavenly Father, may you anoint us with your spirit, Lord Father, to discern every time the devil is attacking. Father, we know, Lord Father, that sometimes he, he uses, Father, even your word and quoting the scriptures. But Father, may we be alert like St. Martin was alert when that angel came with golden sandals and the crown. He put in on it and said, get it behind me, Satan. Father, we see it's a time of deception. A time where the devil is doing miracles and signs and lying wonders. But Father, we want our souls to be safe, anchored in the heaven of rest, hiding in Jehovah. Father, I pray that today, Lord Father, those who are being tricked by the devil to look at their failures.
to look at their past, to look at their mistakes, to reason with the word, and Father, to start complaining with the memory, with the memories. May they rise, Father, and know who they are, and start claiming, Father, the promise of the hour. Start possessing every inch of ground that the devil stole from them. Father, those who are looking at lying vanities, observing their symptoms and circumstances, may they look up to you and know that you are a present help in time of need. Father, I pray that as the devil has been exposed, we cast him out in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, Father, that even with our, as parents, we have more wisdom to raise our children in holy atmosphere as husbands and wives. We will have the wisdom, Father, to shut out devil's things and wealthy things penetrating our homes. As the ministry, Father, will have the wisdom to shut out demonic things entering the church. As individuals, we have the wisdom to shut out things that take over in our minds. The viruses of faith that come up and cause doubts and fears and worries. But Father, make us pure and know where we are standing in Christ and have that authority to speak the word in power and demonstration. To see, Lord Father, the God of the Bible alive again and fighting our battles. So Father, if there be any sick person today, I pronounce healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. May you touch them. May you set them free. If there be someone with an emergency who is looking for the God of the Bible, teach them to have hold on faith. To stay in faith. To pray and believe until something spiritual happens. Heavenly Father, we need a supernatural experience. We need your presence every day because this is a treacherous hour. This is a time that is so dangerous. Where there is this mamba on the way where people are dying spiritually in the pews. Father, where it will take a scripturally trained church that knows their position in Christ. Heavenly Father, may we be back again to the scriptural authority of the believer. Knowing our position and our possession. Father, we pray that those who have been robbed by the thief, the devil, may you bring back, Father, supernaturally restore what has been stolen from them. May we see, Lord, Father, joy in our lives. May we learn to trust. May you overhaul our system that we may be renewed, transformed by the renewing of our minds, that we can have that divine operation system, that our value system will be things that glorify you, Lord things that are higher things that father magnify your name but may we never be trapped in central things of this world may we never be trapped father even in spiritual enticing spirits doctrines of devils that are all over in this world religious spirits that are all over and lying spirits father we want to be pure before you we want to live a holy life and shun the wrong and do the right father anoint us Keep us true. Father, we avoid all the distractions that the devil is bringing to us. We remember in those days when the, in, in, in the time, it says, is this the time? They were told, to look on this. But there were distractions. People started going for things that are not the original thing. Instead of them looking on that, when they were told, look on this. Father, we want to stay and endure and be a, a scripturally trained church. Endure hardship as disciplined soldiers, knowing, Father, that at the end, the toils of the road will seem nothing when we get to the end of the road. As we end this service, Father, anoint us, give us practical victories, and give us, Father, breakthroughs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. We have come to the end of the service. So let's go and shut out the devil in every sphere of our life i ran through a lot of things that's just go and digest when teaching sometimes i bombard you with many things so that the devil doesn't bombard you with many things outside there so just go and go through the service slowly you will learn a lot so um pray for us um some of us will be traveling to Deppen. some of then the next week can the other one will be having a revival in South Africa it will be in Florida so we've combined with the pastor uh, David from Florida so our revival will be in Florida Friday, Saturday, Sunday the other weekend not this one 
then the next weekend i'll be preaching in mauritius so also pray for us so august is going to be a tight program because i'll be almost always moving out but pray for us um, that god will be glorified in everything that we do god bless you we'll sing as we dismiss <laughs>